And they talk about when you are in virtual reality, you actually own, like embody the virtual body. So it's totally different from other type of media. For example, in the digital games, you play a character. So you look at the character at your screen. So there's a distance from your actual self mm -hmm. and the character. Um, just And we know there's a first person perspective in video, video games, but you are still looking at uh, his hands in the screen, but not, and you can see your actual hands in the real world. So there is still a, like a gap between mm -hmm. your body and, and the character's body. But in virtual reality, if you have the experiences to put on the H, uh, head mounted devices, which is H. And D devices, you you have these goggles and you put it on. When you, if you have a virtual body, if you look at it, you look down, you'll feel like that virtual body is your own body because you can, you know, move your hands and move your body and just move along like that. So that 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 thing is really interesting because the because of this embodiment, uh, protoise effect indicates that if the characteristics in this virtual body will influence your behavior and your attitudes. Mm. So from my perspective as a scholar, I wanted to go deeper with the theory because that theory only talks about, oh, it would change your uh, self-perception and self-alteration. And it didn't really specify why it changes your attitude and behavior. So um, in my two of the studies that I I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to, my argument is that because the embodiment, you, it changes your temporary self-concept. So you temporarily perceive yourself differently and it align with this virtual body. And because of that, that would change your um, uh, virtual behavior.